Algebra 2 Cram, New York State Algebra 2 Regents, Common Core, Descriptive Statistics. Question 7, Mean and Sample Standard Deviation. Inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com for your complete review packages. Question 7, Mean and Standard Deviation. From 1984 to 1995, the winning scores for a golf tournament were... <laughs> I don't think I want to say all these, but hey, what the heck. 276, 279, 279, 277, 278, 278, 280, 282, 285, 272, 279, and 278. Using the standard deviation for the sample that would be uh, represented by S, find the percent of these winning scores that fall within one standard deviation of the mean. Definitely press pause if you need to, and I'll give you a moment to think. Okay, so we're going to use our graphing calculator, okay, um, in order to figure out the statistics that they're asking for. And the two statistics that they're asking for, um, well, implicitly they're asking for it. We need to figure out the mean and the standard deviation to figure out what percentage of these data values lie within one standard deviation from the actual mean. Okay? Alrighty then. So that's why we're using our graphing calculator, because if we were to do this by hand, it takes a little bit longer. That's why the technology of a calculator was invented, to make things more expedient. And I'm demonstrating specifically on the TI-84 Plus model. And so what this is going to do is basically summarize and interpret the data given here. In this one variable, this one variable being winning scores. If you go further into statistics studies beyond Algebra 2, you'll deal with multiple variables, okay? Or maybe one, you know, some, well, yeah, sometimes you deal with multiple variables in Algebra 2 as well, but rarely is that ever tested on the regions, okay? Yeah, so the one variable, again, that we're dealing with, are the winning scores for the specified golf tournament, okay? And so the first thing that we're going to want to do is enter all these data points into what's called a list. So what I want you to do is turn on your calculator, press on, then hit the stats application key and this window will come up. And the first one um, list that populates is the edit list. So you're going to go ahead and select option one because that brings us to the list edit screen. And here my list line starts at list three because, because I accidentally deleted list one and list two and I don't know how to repopulate them on the screen. So my list three is probably your list one, okay? Alrighty then, so it's nice and clean and clear for us. So we're just going to go ahead and start filling in our data values. So I'm doing this by hitting 276. Then when you hit enter, the data value, you know, is populated in the list. Okay, so we're going to continue doing this for the next data point and continue on until we get all the way down to the last value. Now what we're going to want to go ahead and do basically is bring up this screen. And this screen is our one um, variable statistic summary um, equation function thingamajig. <laughs> basically, when you input a list of one variable data values into your graphing calculator, using the list method that I just showed you, this feature, which is brought up by hitting the stats key, and then you're going to hit the um, red arrow. It's going to bring you to calculate. The first thing that you're going to see is a one variable statistic calculator um, function. 
is going to be listed under option one. And specifically, that's called um, one var stats on this particular model. If you're using a different model, it might, might be called something different. Okay. And so, yeah, the first thing that you're going to do, notice is that list three, which is the list that I was editing, automatically populates the list line. We never inputted a frequency list, and for more on frequency lists, I think you can look at question five of this series for how to do that. So we're going to go ahead and hit our down key, and down again, then enter for calculate, and we get all these um, statistics for our one variable of winning scores, okay? We have one variable with multiple data values. All right. So I hope you're following, because sometimes I'm a little all over the place, but that's okay. We don't always have to be, well, yes, we do have to be super organized, especially when approaching the algebra to regions. Okay, so as we can see here, the sample mean denoted by this symbol, which is red X bar, is going to be equivalent to 278. 0.6 if we round it um, to the nearest tenths place, okay? And then we have our sample standard deviation is going to be equivalent to 3.1 also if we round it to the nearest tenths place, okay? Now to answer the actual question, finding the percent of these winning scores that fall within one standard deviation from the mean. So we have our mean, we have our standard deviation, and it makes sense that this interval that they're seeking, um, well, you're going to have one standard deviation in the negative direction and one standard deviation in the positive direction. Pretend like this two is our mean. So we would get x bar, that's the mean, minus one standard deviation to a maximum of x bar, our sample mean, plus one standard deviation. Now we can go ahead and fill in the values. So we get 278.6 minus 3.1 to 278.6 plus 3.1, okay? And when we go ahead and solve for these data points, we end up with 275.5 to 281.7. So here goes our interval of interest. And just as a note to you, where we yielded um, decimal answers, which is usually the case um, when we have a mean and a standard deviation. So you're going for the lower end of the interval, you're going to want to round up because anything beneath 275.5 is actually outside of one standard deviation for the mean, from the mean, okay? And then when you get to the upper end of the interval, which in this case is 281.7, you want to round down because if you were to round up, if you were to round this number, let's say to 282, that would be incorrect because it's not included within the boundary of 281.7. So I think what I'm basically trying to say is that we need to do a quick scan of the raw data to look for data values anywhere from 276 to 281, all right? And after doing a scan, a visual scan of these data points, we notice that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine values out of the total of 12 values. And if you don't know how many values you have, just look at N, this represents the number of data values, and you see that you have 12. So nine out of 12 of these values are going to fall within one standard deviation from the mean. But since the question is specifically asking for percentage, when you multiply nine out of 12 by 100%, you get 75%, okay? Therefore, our final answer choice is going to be 75%. Good luck studying, and thanks for tuning in.